But uh, we, we're here tonight for um, Sandra Beasley. We're so glad to welcome her back. She came here last year as the um, summer Grisham poet in residence. And um, she had her, her second uh, volume of poetry published, I Was the Jew Box, which is just a great collection. Um, while she was here in that very brief period of time, she managed to um, uh, insinuate herself with her charming personality into our hearts. And, and with her poetry, she insinuated herself into our souls. So she changed our lives. She changed our lives. She did. And, um, and um, but she, to, she's here for her, her latest book, is Don't Kill the Birthday Girl, which is actually a memoir. It's prose. And like many um, talented poets, when they turn their hands to pose, prose, they're um, excellent, beautiful writers. And it's a, it's a very lovely memoir with that um, about her experiences growing up as somebody that's just basically deathly allergic to everything, and um, how she survived, and uh, sort of a, a history of allergies and I guess food intolerances, and um, and told it in a very interesting uh, way and enlightening and broadened my world quite a bit. So um, we're so glad to have her here. And welcome her back, and we hope that she will just com continue us to visit us as often as she can and keep writing lots and lots of poetry, poetry and po prose, because we, we just love all the parts of her. So please help me welcome Miss Sandra back to Oxford. <laughs> Thank you so much for that sweet introduction. I am now going to take you with me on the road, so that you can tell everybody. Um, golly, thank you. Um, I drove straight in from Knoxville today. Uh, yesterday I woke up in Washington, D.C. Um, I did an interview with Canada, and by Thursday I do an interview with Ireland. Uh-oh. All right, now's our chance. Anything you want to drop, anything that needs to go off, make it go off now. Um, <laughs> this, to celebrate this book with you all means a lot to me in particular because I have a very clear memory um, a, a, just a little bit over a year ago of stopping off in a hotel room outside Nashville and hammering out what I hoped was going to be the last chapter of Don't Kill the Birthday Girl before driving on into Oxford in a city I'd never been, in a town I'd never been to, a, a state that I'd never been to, really not knowing what I would find with the summer poet in residence position, the spear position, as its uh, founder, Beth Ann Fennelly, calls it. Um, and what I found was a town that I just fell head over heels in love with. Um, this community, in terms of its love of literature, is absolutely unique and one of a kind. And that's why I keep finding excuses to come back again and again and again. But uh, my very first few days in the Grisham house, I, as much as I wanted to be social, I was actually holed up reading the final manuscript of Don't Kill the Birthday Girl to send off to my publishers at Crown. So for me, the birth of this book really is inextricably tied to this place, this town. Um, I just want to start off by thinking Square Books, which is, I mean, what other town? When I'm trying to summarize Oxford people, I say you have a square with four sides. Three of them in this town has a bookstore on it. And I think that they have done so much and have certainly been so, so supportive of me as an author. And I just cannot thank you all enough, the entire staff, Richard, Lisa, Lynn, Cody, everybody. Um, I want to thank Crown my publisher, which has been so supportive of this book, and my friends and family. When you tell your family that you are writing a memoir, they look at you and they thought, we, we didn't think it could get worse than poetry. We didn't think we could be more scared about what you're going to manage to write than to have you announce that you're going to write a memoir. But they have been so generous in giving me permission to put my story on the page. And although they can't be here with me today, I know they're here in spirit. Um, so as Lynn mentioned, Don't Kill the Birthday Girl blends several different elements together. There is a lot of science, 
I could probably tell you more about variable epitopes right now than you ever wanted to know. Uh, there's a lot of cultural history. I can tell you about how Kentucky Fried Chicken came to have its secret recipe, or I could tell you about the uh, struggles that children with wheat allergy experience because the Catholic Church has refused to approve wheat-free, gluten-free wafers for First Communion. There's a lot of different aspects in which food allergy intersects with the common sphere. But um, I know that this audience has been, you know, really supportive of me personally, and so I think it's only fair in return that the portion that I share with you today is memoir, is truly my story.